Dear people of God, in the season of Advent, it is our responsibility and joy to prepare ourselves to hear once more the message of the angels, to go to Bethlehem and see the Son of God lying in a manger. Let us hear and heed in Holy Scripture the story of God's loving purpose from the time of our rebellion against him until the glorious redemption brought to us by his holy child, Jesus. And let us look forward to the yearly remembrance of his birth with hymns of songs and praise. But first, let us pray for the needs of his whole world, for peace and justice on earth, for the unity and mission of the church for which he died, and for harmony amongst all people of faith. And because he particularly loves them, let us remember in his name the poor and helpless, the cold, the hungry, and the oppressed, the sick, and the many who mourn, refugees and those displaced by violence, the lonely and unloved, the aged and little children, as well as all those who do not know the love of God. And finally, let us remember before God, Mary, the mother of our Lord, and the whole communion of saints, which no one can number, whose hope was in the world made flesh, the word made flesh, and with whom in Jesus we are one, forevermore. And now to sum up all these petitions, let us pray in the words which Christ himself has taught us. Following along in our bulletin, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we be forgiven. May God, the creator of all things, bless us with abundant grace. May Christ, the word made flesh, give us the joys of everlasting life. And to the fellowships of the saints in light, may the Holy Spirit guide us all. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Adam and Eve rebel against God, a reading from the book of Genesis. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God say, you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was for good and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loin clothes for themselves. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself, he said. Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman whom you gave to me to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? The woman said, the serpent tricked me and I ate. Therefore, the Lord God sent forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. Thanks be to God.
God promises to bless Abraham for his faithfulness. A reading from the book of Genesis. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son. I will indeed bless you, and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies, and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. Thanks be to God. God comforts his people and calls on them to prepare for redemption. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, 
that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all of her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. And the uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Thanks be to God. The birth of the Messiah is foretold. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
the prophet Micah foresees the glory of Bethlehem. A reading from the prophet Micah. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrata, though you are small among the class of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler of, over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. Therefore Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son. And the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. Thanks be to God.
The angel Gabriel salutes the Blessed Virgin Mary. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Thanks be to God. St. Luke tells of the birth of Jesus, a reading from the Gospel according to Luke. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph, Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth to Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her first son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. Thanks be to God.
The shepherds go to the manger, a reading from the Gospel according to Luke. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the, of the Lord shone round them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Thanks be to God.
St. John unfolds the great mystery of the Incarnation, a reading from the Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind the light that shines in the darkness and the darkness that has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, Enlighten by your Holy Spirit those who teach and those who learn, that rejoicing in the knowledge of your truth, they may worship you and serve you from generation to generation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And then let's say together the St. Francis Prayer, which is in your leaflet. Lord, Make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. So when the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and queens and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, then the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoners, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among all people, and to make music in the heart. So now go in peace to love and serve the world. Amen.